When I began the saga of building my model house, I remember thinking that it would be amazing if I could install a working electrical system. And as I've finished up the outside over the past few weeks, I've started really thinking about the best way to make this a reality. Hi and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be installing power into the model house. Every electrical system has a few different parts that help power get from the street to an appliance. Typically, power enters the house either via a set of elevated wires or a set of underground ones. That power flows through a meter socket, which tells the electric company how much power you use. Eventually, the power heads inside and into a main panel, which divides the power among each circuit. This power then runs through wires inside the house to electrical sockets that can be used to power any main certified electrical device. This last part is where I'm going to start, making electrical sockets. I plan to use 12 volt DC throughout the model, and I need to have some sort of mechanism for attaching electrical devices to this source. Initially, when looking online for existing solutions, I found out that the dollhouse building community typically uses a special type of plug when wiring up their models, and this seemed like exactly what I wanted. Until I looked at the price. Wow, these can get expensive. So I started looking for alternatives. The most promising idea I came up with was actually a connector that I bet most of us are familiar with, the 3.5mm audio jack. The technical name for these connectors are TRS connectors, or tip ring sleeve. They are called this because there are three contacts on the male end of the connector, the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. Typically these wires would carry an audio signal to a speaker or a set of headphones, but in my case I'm going to use one wire for ground, one wire for plus 12 volt and the final wire for something special I'll talk about soon. But first things first, we need to make some electrical boxes. To begin, I need to know more about the jacks I'm working with. It looks like these jacks are 3 16 inch by 3 16 inch by 1 half inch. With these dimensions known, I can start to design the electrical box that fits them. This is what I came up with. Let's build it. Each box will be made from sheet metal. I'll mark out all the dimensions using my calipers. and then cut each blank to size. To form the rough electrical box shape, I'll bend each blank to form a rectangular prism with one side missing. And here's what I've got. It's looking about the right size, but let's stick some sockets inside just to be sure. Good, it looks like they fit. Time to make some more of them. Next up, I need to figure out how I want to install the audio jacks into the box. Here's my idea. I'm going to add a crossbar inside of the box that has a hole going through the middle. This crossbar will give the front plate something to mount to, 
and just like a full size electrical box, I'll use one small bolt right in the center. This crossbar is a tricky part to make. I went back and forth a bunch on what type and thickness of material to use, but I ended up deciding on this eighth inch thick aluminum bar. On the mill, I drilled a bunch of holes, roughly spaced about 100 thou apart. Then I cut these sections apart using a hacksaw. These ended up looking quite crude, so I cleaned up the sides on the mill. Then, I could cut each to width so that they'd fit into the box. Finally, here's all the crossbars set into place. Now I can start on the face plates. I'm going to make this piece out of a thin piece of plexiglass. I roughly guessed how big the face plate should be, and then ran it up to the nearest even measurement. After ripping strips of material lengthwise, using a good pair of pliers, I snap the strip at even intervals to form small faceplate sized pieces. In hindsight, I don't know if this was the best process. Had I just cross cut the strips on the table saw, I would have probably ended up with a better result. Now, with the pieces cut out, I marked out the location of the center bolt with my calibers. I did all of the drilling work for this project on top of this bit of plywood and sandpaper. And yes, it's some leftover from the shingle project. This gave me a non-slip surface that made drilling through the plexiglass significantly less likely to cause the piece to shatter. Anyway, I drilled and countersunk the hole, which will give the head of the bolt a place to sit later on. See what I mean? The countersunk head really makes this look slick. Now that all the boxes are made, I can start to think about mounting the jacks. First, I put a dot roughly where I wanted the center of each jack to be. I'll need these locations shortly. Drilling somewhat large holes in thin, brittle material like this plexiglass is often tricky. The holes I drilled before were small enough that it didn't really matter, but for these holes I'm about to drill, I'm going to switch to a stepped drill bit. These bits are made to go through thin sheets of material. The most important characteristic is that since they don't have flutes on them, the bit resists getting caught in the material. I'll start out by drilling a 3 16 hole at each of these small dots. This gets me most of the way to there, but the outside of my jacks are 5mm, which is ever so slightly bigger. As I don't have a 5mm bit that wouldn't wreak havoc on this thin material, 
I'll slowly enlarge this hole with a small needle file. And, through some trial and error, both jacks fit snugly. This is exactly what I had hoped for. Now, I'll attach the faceplate to the crossbar, and mount the whole assembly into a box. With a little bit of glue to hold the crossbar in place, the electrical box is nearing completion. Importantly, because I glued the crossbar to the box and not the faceplate, the whole box still comes apart. This will become critical as I wire the box into the house's electrical system. In addition, I'll use this opportunity to paint most of the faceplates white. And with that detail complete, I can put the box back together. Here's all the finished single wide electrical boxes. If I can say so myself, these are super cool little objects. I did have a few casualties along the way. I had a few face plates shatter on me, this one at the very end of the process. And I accidentally got some glue in the threads of a few bolts, which caused some issues in the moment, but nothing some quick action with an X-Acto knife couldn't solve. I decided to leave a few of the box face plates unpainted. They just look too cool for me to paint all of them, and I'll probably put these clear ones in the basement, or somewhere that they are less visible but still accessible. Now with the boxes made, it's time to wire them up. A while back, I was able to buy this roll of dual conductor wire when a local electronics store went out of business. And it's perfect! The colors of the wires on the inside are even correct. I'll cut and strip a length of this wire to hook up to each electrical box. One quick thing. Before I start soldering, I need to drill a hole in the side of this receptacle's electrical box for the wires to go through. And, with the wires fed through the box, it's time to solder. It took me quite a few iterations of this process to get something that worked. I'm not all that great at soldering, and there's very little room for error in the tight space that makes up the electrical boxes. The way I positioned the wires was very particular. Remember that third pin on each audio jack that I said I'd talk about later? Well, I'm going to be using that third pin to provide a control signal to each socket that I can use to turn each on or off remotely. To provide this signal, I'll run a separate wire to each jack. Each is brown so that it will blend in with the inner structure of the house. To insulate all the connections, I'll wrap each jack in electrical tape. And then, I'll jam all these wires back into the box. This was the hardest part, by far. I really didn't give myself enough room in these things. And here's the complete, final electrical box. It's a bit thicker than I would have ideally liked, but that's really my only complaint. I really like these things a lot. There's only one step left. Let's install these boxes into the house. I'll mount each electrical box right up against a stud. I'll drill a series of holes through the studs so that the wires can pass horizontally through the wall cavity. At this point, I realize there's one other piece of hardware I need, some junction boxes. 
I threw a few together, and here's the gist of the process. Now that I had a junction box, I mounted it to the inside of the wall and stuck all the sets of wires inside. I twisted together all the black wires into one bundle and all the white wires into another bundle. After some solder, I put a bit of heat shrink over each connection. As I shrunk the tubing, I tried to make them look like wire nuts, and I think I was somewhat successful. Finally, after putting the lid on the junction box, it was time to give it a try. I'll plug in a short length of headphone cable that I've attached to an LED. And nice, it looks like it works! Anyway, that's all I have for now. Before the next episode, I need to install quite a few more of these circuits throughout the house, and I'll do that off camera. I'm a fan of the way this system came out, and hopefully you enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching! I'd love to hear what you think of the electrical system so far in the comments below. See you again next time!